Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the replace all method in the ArrayList class. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, select begin, and scroll all the way down here to the array list replace all method. So basically the method signature for the uh, replace all method here is um, just a single parameter here of unary operator type, right? And unary operator is a functional interface. And inside the diamond syntax or chevrons, we just have a single type parameter, type variable in there. And then of course, of course, our uh, parameter variable name here, reference variable. It's a void return type. So the replace all method replaces all elements of the current ArrayList instance with the result of the unary operator expression. You might be like, say what? I'll explain. And this is going to be a little confusing, and by the end of this tutorial, you'll understand it there. So this method may not produce the results that you think it should, as this method replaces each and every element with the result of an expression. Now there is another replace all method in the collections class where you can replace certain elements with other values. I'll demonstrate that as well. In order to use this method, you will need a basic understanding of lambda expressions. If you are not familiar with lambda expressions, the following tutorials will teach you what you need to know in order to use this method. Okay, uh, and those basically those three tutorials if you're not familiar with that. So the unary operator interface is a functional interface that has a single abstract method named apply that returns the, a result of the same object type as the operand. Now the unary operator interface does not have an explicitly defined abstract method, rather it inherits the abstract method apply from its super interface function. Okay, um, so basically here's kind of the way the whole declaration of the interface would work out there. You, um, unary operator takes a single basic type uh, parameter or type variable there and it extends function. Function takes two type parameters or type variables and here's what the apply method looks like. It's abstract of course there's no method body here. Apply is the name and T is just a generic type and then it returns back that exact same type Okay, so if you have string coming in here, right, string in here, it's going to return a string here. If you have integer, uppercase I, right, uh, coming in there, it's going to return an integer. So basically we pass the unary operator based lambda expression as the argument for this method to do its thing. I'll demonstrate exactly how the un unary operator interface works in the source code. All right, let's come down here and highlight all this stuff here. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop but if you don't you can create one really fast by right clicking selecting new shortcut cmd next and finish. All right let's go ahead and open that up type in java c which is the java compiler command you should see all this stuff scroll by however if you receive an error message watch my tutorial on installing the java development kit. I want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash, cd is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I will make a directory here called java with the md command, and I already have that folder, but if you don't, um, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Change directories to the java folder, and I'm going to make a, another directory here called array list replace all. Okay, let's change directories to that, cd and I basically hit tab on my keyboard, and then let's uh, notepad. Boy, I could type this morning. Okay, ArrayList replace all.java be the name of my source code file, also known as a compilation unit. Let's control V to paste or right click and select paste. Let's come up here and save this. So in here I'm basically importing everything out of the Java Util package and everything out of the Java Util function package, right? Because uh, you and you Unary operator is in this particular package. Uh, ArrayList is in the util package as well as collections right here. Okay. Um, in here I've got this class or ArrayList replace all and I've got an interface down here. Functional interface is what I've called it. 
and then it takes a single type parameter or type variable, right? Generic, and basically I've I made the uh, the exact same thing here as the unary operator interface, just so we can demonstrate how that's done there. So um, for the apply method here, the abstract method there, we'll pass in a um, lambda expression, right? And we'll get the same return type back from that. So let's just demonstrate that here. First thing, here's my main method entry point here. So functional interface, and I'm specifying integer and then fi, right? I'm setting fi equal to this lambda expression here, right? Basically, uh, whatever value we pass in, it's just going to simply add 10 to it, okay? So integer i equals 31. Then displaying this to the console, fi dot apply, right? And here's my apply. And we've already said our functional interface is going to be an integer type. So we know we're going to have an integer coming into the apply method as an argument. And then a return type of integer as well, because that's specified right up here, okay? And so all this stuff matches, so that's good there. So this should take 31 and add 10 to it and for the return value of invoking the apply method. Display that to the console. So let's go up here and save it. And let's go ahead and compile and run it at this point there. Okay, Java C to compile it. Java to run the Java virtual machine. Invoking this class. Okay, so. First thing that's displayed to the console is 41, okay? So that's perfect, did exactly what we wanted it to do. So you can kind of see how all that, uh, all that works there. All right, um, our functional interface is exactly what you'd expect. It's, it's functionally the same as the unary operator. So now let's go ahead and do unary operator and then integer. And then instead of, you know, doing two different lines, I'll just do the same line here. So in this lambda expression, we're just going to be multiplying whatever the value is times itself, okay? So I'm still using the same integer i up here, right? And I'm setting it equal to 20 before I pass it in there, right? So integer type. And if we invoke the apply method from the unary operator interface there, we should get uh, basically 20 times 20, which will be 400, right? And you can see, there we go, we got 400 up here. Okay, so that's how the unary operator works there. So I uh, just want to do one more simple example of the unary operator here. You might be going, man, you know, this just seems like a lot of, this is like crazy. Why don't we just go, you know, something i equals i plus 10 or something, right? <clears throat> you know, but, um, we're going to be applying this across a lot of records in an array list class there, so. Which I'll demonstrate in just a moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. So one more, one more unary operator um, section here. We'll do a, this statement. will basically declare another unary operator here. String type, and then SUO is my reference variable. And here's my simple lambda expression. I'm just going to be invoking the two uppercase, right? Now, because I'm passing in string here, the compiler knows that uh, two uppercase is one of the methods in the string class, so everything's going to just go peachy here. So string s equals java c java, right? You'll notice we uppercase j, uppercase j. And then to the console, what we're gonna do is when we invoke the apply method here, passing it in, you know, the, this value there, should force it to uppercase based on this lambda expression there, okay? And you can see, just playing that to the console, Java, see Java. All right, excellent. So let's now build on what, what I've taught you regarding the, the unary operator interface. You should kind of get it at this point there. There's nothing more to it. It's actually rather simple there. Um, nothing more, nothing less to it. It doesn't do a whole lot, but uh, that's, about, that's about it. You can basically perform a a single operation on it and get the return value of that operation back, okay? Um, you might be able to do a little bit more with like a code block or something like that, but uh, in any case, it replaces each and every record with whatever the result is there. So um, let's go ahead and um, create a new array list here, string type, and I'm going to call the reference variable states. 
All right, and then I'm just going to invoke the add all method and then use the arrays class and the as list method to go ahead and populate our states array list here with all the states. We'll display it to the console there, right? There's what we've got right there. And then um, I'm going to do another, a new unary operator type, right? String. U O ref is my reference variable. And here's my lambda expression, the simple two uppercase. And then states invoking the replace all method right here will basically force everything to uppercase, right? And then we'll go ahead and display that to the console. And sure enough, here's what we get. Uh, everything is forced to uppercase. Okay. Let's uh, come down here a little bit more. And now, rather than you know going through, now that we know what the unary operator does, right? We just need to pass in a compatible um, lambda expression with that, right? So, uh, in this particular case, we have to specify string x, right? And that that essentially does the same thing as you know um, setting the type variable up here, right? Because we're passing in as the basically the lambda expression argument there to the left of the lambda operator. That'll specify that uh, you know this is going to be a string type, so it's inferred that um, the return type will basically be string as well. And we can invoke the two lowercase because that's part of the string class. So um, basically, after just calling the replace all method and putting the lambda expression right in there, you could see we get our lowercase stuff right here, right? Okay, let's go over one quick thing here on the collections replace all. So you can kind of see how this replace all works here. It does a, a blanket replace of each and every element there, all right? So let's say, for example, you only wanted to replace one particular element with something. Well, that's where the collections replace all method comes in. It takes three um, three parameters. First one is the basically like the list, right, which happens to be the array list here, and then the second parameter is the element that you're searching for, right? Um, so we want to replace all elements with California, and then the third one is what you want to replace with Earthquakeville, right? Okay. So and then we'll display that to the console there. And as you can see, after the collections replace all, California Earthquakeville, right? Uh, this actually should be lowercase c. I guess a little typo on that. Um, but basically, you can see that uh, California up here is replaced with Earthquakeville right there. So that's that's kind of like um, it seemed relevant to put that in there. Let's just put it that way. All right, now the last final thing I'm going to do here is create a, a new array list numbers uh, integer. I'll, everything in that array list will be an integer type there, and I'm going to populate it with 562 and 107. Auto boxing will actually change these primitive int types to actual integer types, and we'll display that. So numbers 562 107, a very simple lambda expression passed into the replace all there, right? And basically to the right of the lambda operator here, we're going to replace everything with x plus 10. Okay, and display that to the console there. So after we invoke that, you get 15, 72, 117. Sure enough, everything x plus 10. Okay, um, I don't really have any final thoughts on this one here. That'll, that'll pretty much, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that. That'll pretty much do it there. So uh, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.